Hello everyone, you're most welcome. My name is Josephine Abkenya. I'm from Uganda and I was born with HIV 27 years ago. When I learned about my yes. HIV status as a young girl, I was enrolled into a psychosocial support group and this was called Aerial. It was named after Elizabeth Glazer's daughter. Since then, I've dedicated my entire life to helping other children and young people like me. I have a bachelor's degree in social sciences from Macquarie University, and I've earned this and used it to support uh, children, other young people to overcome the realities that HIV present. With me right now, we have a panel of amazing women and children, and they're here to share their personal stories as we seek to discuss what exactly it will take for us to create an AIDS free generation. So allow me to start with Babs and oh. Anaki. Babs is a mentor mother with mother to mother and her daughter was born HIV free. Babs received um, this support during the time when she was pregnant from mothers to mothers. Babs, you're most welcome on this panel and I would love you to share your journey from being a newly diagnosed pregnant woman almost 20 years ago to a healthy worker and a role model in South Africa. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, my name is Baba Lompono. I'm from South Africa. I'm a mother who's living with HIV for more than 19 years now. Uh, I, through my HIV journey, I was diagnosed when I was pregnant. I learned about my status during my, during my antenatal care visits. One of the doctors that used to see me is the founder of Mothers to Mothers, who is Dr. Mitch Pese. Mitch Pese is the doctor that was able to introduce me to mothers, mothers, mental mothers who were in the facility where he was working. Uh, I was very happy to meet these women, although I was scared. So due to the information and knowledge that I received from those mental mothers, I was able to adhere to my treatment and have a beautiful HIV-free uh, child. So after that, I, I was interested to come and join Mothers to Mothers so that I can share my own experience and my journey and also provide more knowledge and education to those women who are newly diagnosed and who are also going through the same fear that I went through when I was also pregnant. I learned to educate and support other women so that they also can be empowered to live HIV free and have HIV free children and also live positively with their families. As of today, I'm still a role model to those women then I can also share those experiences with those, with those um, children. Indeed, uh, there is nothing that is more beautiful and more supporting, like uh, getting support from a person that has gone through the experiences that you're going through. And Nathi, uh, as a teenage girl in South Africa, how do you talk about HIV prevention when you're with your peers? Being a teenager in South Africa is quite difficult based on the peer pressure that we always get. We experience things that are out of our control. And sometimes those things lead to unplanned pregnancies and also uh, STIs that prevent us from growing or prevent us from doing things that we want to do in our lives. A lot of the times we are not educated enough about what, what we should not do as youngsters. And sometimes it's difficult to even open up to a, to a young mother or even just mothers out there because we feel that we are going to get criticized for even talking about sex. Aside from the uh, COVID pandemic, we also have a HIV pandemic and unplanned pregnancies, which also lead to dropouts and uh, some girls thinking that they should be supported by men instead of standing up for themselves. It's a lot, but we need to teach young girls how to be independent and motivate them to do more. Uh, thank you so much. Indeed, we need to make people come to you know talk about HIV freely because uh, the more they talk about it the more you get to demystify the myths and misconceptions around that they are believing in 
So uh, thank you so much for that uh, wonderful work. Um, allow me now proceed to the other panelist called uh, Doreen. Doreen is a young woman who was born with HIV and has since then grown into a healthy, active inspiration for her peers. So Doreen, we would love to hear from you. How did you navigate learning about your status and why is it so important to advocate against stigma? I come from a discordant family. My dad is negative, my mom is positive, and I'm the only one of my siblings living with HIV. But when I finished high school and I realized that now disclosing my status was a challenge, people did not look at people living with HIV as normal people because living with HIV has been seen as a sin. And it's almost 40 years since HIV has been with us in the world. And the people still look at it as a promiscuous a disease. I am sharing my story to tell people that we are living beyond our HIV status, that I have been here for the last 28 years and I'm not dying. So that is one of the things that I need to break that barrier of stigma because the, 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 the donors and all the policymakers have come up with this um, ambitious plan of 95, 95, 95. But the elephant in the room is the stigma. If you, we have not killed stigma, people won't take the medication. If we have not addressed stigma, people will not be virally suppressed. And if we have not uh, addressed stigma, people will not get tested and know their HIV status because they still fear HIV. But by sh sharing my lived experience, I get to tell people that this is my journey, this is my life, and I've lived with it for my whole life. It's not an easy journey, but, but we are human beings. We are not numbers. Wow. Thank you so much, Doreen. By the way, I have to let you know that you uh, I'm one of your fans on Instagram, so I follow your posts, and uh, I'm really happy with uh, the work you're doing on social media. Uh, allow me now proceed to uh, Miriam. Miriam is a dynamic activist for young mothers in Uganda and internationally. And she has played a very big role in creating an advocacy agenda, outlining what needs to change to support adolescent parents that are affected by HIV and their children. Miriam, can you share with us about your life journey today? as you go to school, raise your son, and address the challenges of being HIV positive? Uh, yeah, we all need to put young families first because there are crucial and a growing population in, in the world. In my country, Uganda, um, very many young mothers or young families are discriminated. They are we are treated as outcasts. We are treated as seen as in the community. When I got pregnant, when I was 15 years, I was forced to leave home, not because I wanted, but because of the discrimination, because of the neglect from family members and friends. So my, my grandmother came to, her, to my rescue. I thank God that I gave birth to my baby boy and he's now five years. So what I can tell donors is that they should encourage us, they should treat us like other people, they should put young families first, and they, they need to involve us in their talks and also give us empowerment. Like they should empower us more than discriminating us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miriam. I'd love to thank all my other panelists, Miriam, Doreen, Babs, and and Nathi for sharing your personal stories and uh, for sharing your work with us, because I believe that it's from such stories, from such life experiences, that we are able to make decisions that will enable us to see an AIDS-free generation. Thank you so much. God bless.